The dog existed before man. And when humans came along, the dog was first to come in to warm himself at man's fire. In the beginning, he followed the hunters to feast on their leavings. And then he joined the hunt. And eventually the dog became man's hunting partner. Ancient Egyptians, Assyrians, and Chinese gave the dog high social status. The Egyptian god Anubis was depicted as having the head of a dog. The dog also held a high place with the Greeks and Romans. Dogs have gone to war at man's side since prehistoric times, and still do. The dog has served as a draft animal, as a kitchen helper, an entertainer, even a salesman. Man has used the dog to find things as a rescuer, as guardian of his home and property, to herd his sheep and cattle as a guide for the sightless, to protect him from criminals, as a companion and friend. The dog has become part of more and more households, either for work or for simple companionship. And the breeding and training of dogs for special purposes has developed into a sport, followed by an avid public throughout most of the world. In the late 19th century, when dog shows, field trials, and other competitions were proliferating rapidly, the American Kennel Club was formed. An organization of clubs, it has grown with the sport and now occupies six floors in the New York Life Building at 51 Madison Avenue in New York City. The American Kennel Club is the governing body of the sport of purebred dogs in the United States. Its rules are enacted by delegates from nearly 400 member clubs and administered by a 12-man board of directors made up of dedicated amateur sportsmen who lend their long experience to guide and direct the sport through a professional executive staff. The oldest partnership between man and dog is in the hunt. Sometime in prehistory, man learned to use the keener nose and greater mobility of the dog to aid him in finding and dispatching game. This partnership has been refined and improved through the centuries with the development of many specialized sporting breeds. Field trials were started to allow sporting dogs to compete with each other with the object of improving the various breeds. It has become a fascinating sport and AKC licenses field trials for Basset Hounds, Beagles, Dachshunds, Pointing Breeds, Retrievers, and Springer Spaniels. Beaglers are the most numerous of the field trial fraternity. AKC licenses more than 400 Beagle trials a year where championship points can be earned. In addition, it sanctions thousands of non-championship events. Participants range from one Beagle families to full-time professional handlers who travel the trial circuit with 15 or 20 hounds. At the field trial we are visiting here, entrants are paired in braces by lot. The hounds in each brace will be competing with each other. Beagles are divided into two classes those 13 inches and under, and those between 13 and 15 inches. With an AKC field representative looking on, they are checked carefully before a competition begins. 
Most beagle clubs maintain grounds which provide good cover for game. Beaters go out to flush a rabbit to provide a fresh trail for the next race of hounds. The beater marks the spot where he last saw the rabbit and the hounds are released. Two judges on horseback follow the action and rate the beagles on their ability and willingness to trail the rabbit. They are not expected to catch the rabbit, but to follow the trail accurately and intelligently and to tell the world what they are up to. In this kind of hunting, the rabbit always gets away and the winning hounds get their picture taken. Pointing breeds assist the hunter by stopping or pointing the instant they scent a game bird. There are 10 pointing breeds and some 380 AKC licensed trials a year. Judges, handlers, and spectators follow the dogs on horseback. The dogs move so fast and range so far, it is impossible to keep up on foot. An AKC official consults with the judges on a rules interpretation. Meanwhile, pheasants are being set out in the bird field to be sure there will be game for the dogs to find. These dogs are also worked in pairs or braces and are set out from a line called the breakaway as the gallery follows on horseback. The dogs will be judged on the speed and thoroughness with which they cover the ground, as well as their behavior on point. This German short-haired pointer is in the bird field. She scents the bird and points. She must not move until her handler flushes the bird and fires a blank. Her bracemate freezes too. He may not scent the bird, but is honoring the first dog's point, which he must do whether in a field trial or on an actual hunt. Now it's all over, but the praise from her handler for a job well done. Springer and Cocker Spaniels must not only find birds, but flush them and retrieve them. Two AKC approved judges observe and rate the dogs. Since the dogs must retrieve as well as find the game, official gunners are ready. This is a field trial for English Springer Spaniels. The dog casts back and forth in front of his handler in a sort of windshield wiper pattern. Once the dog finds and flushes the bird, he must sit and wait for the handler's whistle that sends him out to retrieve. The dog is back with the bird in short order. Because of their versatility, Springers make great hunting partners. Springers are also expected to take to the water. Field trials often include water retrieves. As the judge notes his performance, the dog is already on his way back with the bird. The ability to grasp and carry a bird without harming it is a requirement for every retrieving breed. It's called a soft mouth. Retriever trials are probably the most demanding. A fully trained retriever is expected to mark and remember as many as four falls, then find and retrieve them on command. They are also expected to follow their handler's directions to find falls they have not seen. Watch this Labrador retriever and his handler demonstrate such a blind retrieve. He gives the dog the line to follow. At the blast of the whistle, he stops and waits for instructions. 
The signal tells him to go further on the same line. Another whistle. And another pause for direction. This time, he is sent to the handler's left. And there's the dummy. In a blind retrieve, the dog must follow his handler's instructions exactly, in as straight a line as the terrain will allow, over land and water, and return by the shortest possible route. Here is a typical retriever trial problem. A pheasant is thrown on land and a duck into the water. And the dog must retrieve them both, one at a time, on directions from the handler. The handler sends her golden retriever out after the duck. The dog has to cross water and a point of land to find the duck on the other side. Watch how she takes an absolutely straight line to the bird. The principal retriever breeds are Labradors, Goldens, and Chesapeake Bay Retrievers. The duck is hobbled so it can't swim away, but it will suffer no harm. The retriever has a soft mouth, and even though she has to stop to get a different hold, she has been trained, as all retrievers must be, not to mouth or bite down on the bird. The duck will come through with feathers unruffled. More than 22,000 retrievers compete in 152 AKC licensed field trials each year, and the path to a field championship is strewn with obstacles like this mixed double retrieve. The dog comes directly back to her handler, hands over the duck, and waits eagerly for the signal to retrieve the pheasant. A well-trained retriever is a great hunting aid. Working with dogs, hunters will lose very few of the birds they bring down. This time, the retriever has crossed two bodies of water with land between, and now must find the pheasant. She was almost on line, and with a minimum of casting about, locates the bird and heads back to her handler. Field trials were started many years ago to emulate the conditions found in an ordinary day's hunting. However, improvement of the dogs by selective breeding and improvements in handling and training methods require that field trials be much stiffer tests of the dog's abilities and the coordination between dog and handler than ordinary field work. If there is an equivalent to the PhD among sporting dogs, it has to be the title of field champion. Obedience training is directly related to the working functions of dogs in many activities. For example, dogs trained for police work must be under complete control by their handlers, immune to the sometimes frightening distractions they encounter on their beats, and immediately responsive in fast-moving situations. Although attack trained, they must be gentle and patient with the public, except in attack situations. All of this requires thorough, basic obedience training. Guide dogs for the blind are examples of the highest form of obedience training, in which the dog is taught not only to respond to its handler's commands, but also to assume responsibility for his safety and well-being. In the sport of obedience trials, all purebred dogs, whether tiny, or huge are eligible to compete and can be trained to obey the commands of their handlers promptly and cheerfully. Obedience trials measure accomplishments ranging from simple healing, sitting, and lying on command to highly complicated tasks such as jumping, retrieving, and tracking. 
Novice competition consists of exercises that all responsible dog owners should teach their dogs, for they are the basic controls that make a dog a good companion and neighbor. Forward. Now let's watch a highly competent dog in competition. These are the exercises that lead to the degree of companion dog excellence, or CDX. Forward. About turn. Notice that in spite of the downpour, the dog is willing and eager to do everything asked of her. Obedience competition rules require this willingness and demand that there be no indication the dog is performing through fear of punishment. This Boston Terrier is so eager, our cameraman has a hard time keeping her in the picture in the retrieve on flat exercise. The hurdle is scaled to the size of the dog, and she must clear it cleanly in both directions, picking up the dumbbell without stopping to mouth it or play with it. Exercise finished. All right, this will be the broad jump. Are you ready? Leave your dog. Mindy, over. Our little performer demands and receives her ration of praise, and she deserves it, for it was a winning effort under miserable conditions. In addition to the exercises just performed, are two which place considerable stress on dogs' faith in their masters. This is the long down, in which handlers command their dogs to stay in the down position while they go completely out of sight for five minutes. In novice competition, the time period is shorter. This is also done in the sit position for three minutes. You can imagine it seems like five hours to a dog in unfamiliar surroundings. This is valuable training for any dog. The dogs must remain in the down position until their handlers return to their sides and the judge says, exercise finished. To earn the degree of utility dog, he must respond to hand signals with no voice commands. This poodle has been signaled to stay, and now to down. Sit. And finally, to come. And heel. Dogs trained to obey hand signals can be controlled from a considerable distance. The utility dog degree demands a great deal of intelligence and ability. This is an exercise in scent discrimination. The dog's owner has handled one of 10 identical articles. The dog must pick out the right one by scent and return it. Philadelphia police put this ability to excellent use. This dog is demonstrating an object search. He has been taught to pick up everything in the area that has a human scent and bring it to his handler. He'll pick up items as small as a car key or a spent cartridge. In this case, it's a revolver. A little awkward to handle, but he manages. 
AKC licensed competitions include a tracking test for a separate degree called TD, or tracking dog. Working off a long lead, the dog must follow the scent of a stranger which was laid down earlier over a quarter mile course. He must pick it up somewhere between the white flag and a red one, which is about 30 yards from the start of the trail. There is the red flag. He's found the trail, and his sensitive nose is leading him along the route followed by the track layer. The dog must find an article left on purpose by the track layer. And there it is, a glove left on the ground. Here's a police dog at work, doing essentially the same job, except that this one has been trained to seek out the scent of explosives to discover hidden bombs. He has been carefully educated to cover the ground thoroughly, and if there are any explosives here, he will find them and let his handler know in no uncertain terms. Dogs with this kind of ability can save many lives. They represent the epitome of obedience training. The great thing about obedience competition is that it is fun for the handler, dog, and spectator and it represents training that is practical and desirable for any size or shape of dog in any situation. Months before any licensed field trial, obedience trial, or dog show, Planning goes on at AKC's Show and Field Trial Plans Department at AKC headquarters in New York. Here, the aim is to ensure that all AKC licensed events are held in accordance with the rules and regulations set by the Board of Directors. The big job of putting on the show is the responsibility of the sponsoring club. The club must transform an empty field into a show site complete with show rings, grooming and parking areas, comfort facilities, food service, and concession areas. The club must select judges, send out entry blanks, sell tickets, publish and sell catalogs, pray for good weather, direct traffic, and do a thousand and one other things before collapsing until next year's show. But it's worth all the trouble particularly on a day like this. At most of the all-breed shows held each year, an AKC field representative is present to assist the club in every possible way. The field representative is an expert with long experience in the sport and a thorough knowledge of AKC policy and regulations. The field representative arrives at a show an hour or so before it opens which is usually at the crack of dawn. He checks all of the facilities and confers with the show superintendent. Later, he will observe the judges and the progress of the show. Field representatives are at shows to help in any way possible to make them successful. All in all, the field representative spends 10 or 12 hours at a show before heading for the next one. Good morning, Mario. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you. Got him. Lovely day today, huh? Great. It's a nice day. Yeah. How's the rings? All set up all right? They're all set up. All yeah. the rubber top tables are in. Good. And we had to change that ring number five and put it right over here because the beads were large. Yeah. All right. And the five, what, you got the dobes in the five yes, now? Yes, okay. I do. Good. All right. So everything's going to start on time? Yeah. Fine. Okay, I'll see you later and okay, I'll nice, check in. Nice to see okay. You. Take okay, care now. A big all-breed show is many things to many people. They come from every corner of the country to match their dogs against others of the same breed. 
or just to watch and enjoy the competition. There are concessions offering everything for dogs from leashes to grooming aids to a final resting place. Dog fanciers compete in fair weather and foul, although everyone you see on a day like this may not be the same happy person or dog you might see on a sunny day. Some of the biggest shows are held indoors, including New York's famous Westminster. Westminster, like this show at Harrisburg, is a bench show. At bench shows, all dogs competing are kept on benches until they are excused by the show committee, usually not until breed judging is completed. Bench shows give dog fanciers and spectators a chance to visit, trade information, and learn from each other. With time out, of course, for showing and judging dogs. When AKC was founded in 1884, dog shows were almost the exclusive province of the wealthy and their full-time kennel managers. Today, dog shows, obedience and field trials are family affairs, engaged in by many thousands of families and individuals from all walks of life. As interest in purebred dogs has grown, so have shows. While many will campaign with just one dog or two, there are dog fanciers who breed and exhibit large numbers of dogs. Sometimes these and other exhibitors employ professional handlers. Here are professional handlers at work in the ring. They not only handle the dogs in the ring, but are responsible for training, grooming, and boarding their charges. There is something for everyone at a dog show, including kids. AKC fosters an event called Junior Showmanship. In this competition, it is not the dogs that are judged, but how well they are handled by the youngsters. This is excellent preparation for serious competition. There is much more to showing dogs than a few minutes in the ring with a judge. The dog must be taught to stand for inspection and to move well on a lead. It must be groomed so that it appears at its best for the competition. This takes hours of care and attention, particularly for the long-coated breeds and hard-coated terriers. Through it all, the dogs must stand and cooperate with their nervous exhibitors. Fortunately, they love all that attention. The standards of the more than 100 recognized breeds are contained in AKC's complete dog book, the Bible of the dog show world. Breed standards are developed by breed clubs. They describe every kind of dog you can imagine, bred for every imaginable purpose. From the smallest, the Chihuahua, to the largest, the giant Irish wolfhound. They represent the wide variety man has developed for specific needs. As modern man has become more specialized, so have his canine partners. The breeds are classified in six categories or groups. This is the non-sporting group. Each dog has already won best of breed and now competes for best in group. The toy group comprises 17 breeds of tiny dogs like this long-haired Chihuahua. There are 22 breeds in the terrier group. Group competition is a sort of semi-final aimed at eventually producing the best in show. Here come the hounds. There are two kinds of hounds. Gaze hounds, like the Afghans, who rely on their keen eyesight, and scent hounds, such as Bassets, who follow their noses. The sporting group consists of 24 breeds, including the various kinds of pointers, 
setters, retrievers, and spaniels. These and some of the hounds are the breeds you might see at a field trial as well as a confirmation show. The working dog group is the largest, with 30 breeds ranging in size from the Great Dane to the Welch Corgi. It's always a tough task for the judge to pick the winner, no matter what the group. And the blue ribbon goes to a coal black Newfoundland. She goes on to compete with the other five group winners for the best in show award. Dog show judges are approved by AKC's board of directors on the basis of their experience with and knowledge of the breeds they are approved to judge. The judges usually begin judging a class by moving them together while forming a general opinion of the class. The judge is mentally measuring the dogs against the breed standard while comparing them with each other. The judge goes over the dogs to feel if the skeletal structure is sound and the dog is well muscled and in good condition. Good hands or touch reveal a lot about the quality of a dog. No judge can form a firm opinion until he or she has checked the dog by touch as well as sight. The winner is the one that in the judge's opinion most resembles the ideal described in the breed standard. Toy dogs and other small breeds are checked on tables to give the judges better perspective in examining them. Touch is especially important on long-haired dogs because the judge can't see what's under that coat. Watching a dog move reveals many things to a judge about structure and general condition. Judges will ask handlers to gate their dogs individually before making up their minds. The climax of the all-breed show is the best in-show judging. At the largest shows, nearly 4,000 entrants are finally narrowed down to best of breed, then best in group. Now it's down to the six group winners. One of them will be chosen best in show. And the winner is the wire-haired fox terrier. In the opinion of the judge, this dog comes closest to the ideal for its breed. The ribbons and the trophies are only part of the story of a dog show, field trial, or obedience event. All of the records of every show and trial come back to AKC in New York to become part of the permanent archives where the career of every winner is on record. Wins are posted on individual dogs' records. Some earn enough points to become title holders in confirmation, field trials, or obedience. That certificate places the dog among the elite in the sport of dogs. Raising and training a purebred dog to be a helper and willing companion is very satisfying in itself. But with a spice of competition, it becomes a fascinating sport. If you would like to get started in the sport of dogs, Get in touch with AKC in New York and request the name of a kennel club in your area. They will help you with information and advice.